Hey everybody, I'm about to go live with Delhi on the Delhi show. Um, the topic is how to get a man. <laughs> Let's see what she has to say. I'm just going to find her on Instagram. Hopefully you can uh, hear some of the footage. Uh, if not, we'll share it later. Toronto, Toronto people. Hey, bro. Hello, hello. Yo, Grace. Yo, Grace. How are you? Delhi, how are you? Good. How are you, sir? I'm well, thank you. Thank you for bringing up the rare, bro. Bless to me. Thanks for, you know, paddling in at the last minute to save the day. Well, paddling business. You always, need, you always need an MVP, you know. You always need an MVP. Yeah. So. Covering your sis. Most valuable preacher. Yeah. Most valuable preacher. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop Davis, how are you, man? I, you know how long I've been looking to, to talk to you? I'm amazing, man. Really? Mm -hmm. I've been following you on Clubhouse. I've been following you on, um, I, I repost okay. a lot of your stuff. So, yeah. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah. I appreciate yeah, it. Big fun here. Yeah, I said, I think I, I said to you one time, I don't always agree, but there's always love. I think I said that one time. Yes, yeah. sir. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you ain't got to always agree. It's, it's for conversation. That's right. That's, That's right. right. That's right. It, it starts a conversation that we don't. Hey, I don't agree a lot of. I don't agree with a lot of my own stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. But it, it causes conversation. Amen. Yeah, that's that's true. amazing. It's honest. I love that. Well, today's topic is all about how to find a man. And so let me set let me set the scene. Yeah. So this 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 conversation is specifically catering to ladies in their forties who have now landed back in the dating game, whether it be through divorce, you know, lots of there's it's a it's a it's a pandemic. It's a pandemic of of singleness. Yeah. Coming out of COVID, we've had lots of failed marriages, we've got long term relationships that have fallen apart. And this this huge group of women who are now back on the dating scene. You know, the last time they were out mingling and making friends was in their 20s and 30s when you can meet someone at, at the university, at your job, you know, that sort of thing. And now they're left with dating apps. Dating apps, managing their time, managing their, their, their kids, their responsibilities. And they do not know what how to get a quality man. So this is the topic for today. Let me start with you, Bishop. So what you're asking, how to get a man in your 40s? I'm, I'm asking you, for the, for the ladies in their 40s who are single, who have experience, they, they're not new to the dating game, they know all the tricks in the book, okay. right? They're back out in the field through no fault of their own or sometimes through their own fault. How do we help? How do I help these women? How do I help so, these women? in navigating the dating game at this stage in life? So for me, I believe it's really no different than any other stage. The dating game is different now, no matter what, what age you are. It is not what it used to be. Uh, whether, you, whether, you're, whether you're 18 uh, or 40, it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, I tell anybody that's single, Instead of looking for somebody, prepare yourself for somebody. As you prepare yourself and position yourself, preparation increases your value and your worth. You know, know what you want. Uh, make sure that you use uh, your experiences of what didn't work to know what you do want. Your experience, your experience of failed relationships are lessons. So. Before you even think about getting back out here, figure out what your what your experiences brought you. What did it teach you? A failed relationship, whatever failed relationship, whether it's divorce, marriage, whatever you're coming out of, learn from every relationship 
and then make you a list. Once you're healed, make a list of what you want. Don't make a list from a broken place because it's going to, because it's going to be a broken list. I think, I think, you know, before, before I bring Bidel to the conversation, I think that, you know, healing is a process that probably that doesn't seem to end for many. And that we're progressing through the through the healing, we're progressing through the good. We have to we have to get on. There's no point in time that I can think of for many women that you're like, oh yeah, the healing's done. Time to get a man. I don't know if I agree with that. Okay. I don't I don't I don't know if I agree with that. Um, I I look at healing from a relationship or healing the heart as the same thing from your body. Your body eventually heals. You know, uh, you may have some aches, but it right. heals, you know, and, it, and it's important to how bad the, you know, everybody coming out of a relationship don't need the same, don't need the same healing. Mm. Different people need different healing. So right. you, know, you got to figure out how much healing you need. But I think to say that you'd never heal and you're going into a relationship, then that's probably where the problem is. You need to be healed before you infect somebody else. Because there's a lot of, there's a lot of, yeah, well, when you look at toxic, when we say people are toxic, well, we really, I studied the word because I was tired of hearing about it, so I wanted to know what it really meant. Uh -huh. You can infect somebody from toxicity, you know? And so uh -huh. many people, many people are going into relationship and they're causing other people to be toxic. So. I, I believe that you should be healed, but and then you should not you should not have a list of what you want from a broken place. It should be from mm -hmm. a healed place. Okay. So I, I, I say before you even get out of here, do the work on you. Hmm. Big Dale, let me bring you to the conversation. You heard what the bishop had to say, and you heard what I had to say. What's your view on this? You well, know, I, babies coming into the dating game at this stage in life. The bishop said, heal yourself before you come and, you know, Inspector, what do you say, bro? Get your behind off of those dating apps. That's what I say first and foremost. Okay? Take your behind off of the... I, I don't call them dating apps. I call them ho apps. Because you're on there trying to meet people. You're meeting multiple men at a time. Nobody's going to take you seriously. If you find and you're on a dating app, something's wrong. Secondly, a healing... A person needs a healer. And... and this is not a popular thought, but trauma bonding works. <laughs> okay. And get, let me give you a, the bishop will understand this one, right? We're all broken. We come to Christ, right? Who is, who is also broken, who is also crucified. And that trauma bond, we recognize his sacrifice. We, we have our own sacrifice. There are some people that are built to allow you to heal past your last relationship. Sometimes the right person can, can change, or as we say, renew your mind so that whatever you've gone through in the past, it becomes irrelevant, right? But looking for love in all the wrong places is called a dating app. <laughs> Listen, this is, these are modern times. I hear you, bro, but the reality of the situation is, is that, yeah, with COVID, there was not an opportunity to, you know, a lady in her 40s is not going to the club to meet a man. You know, if she's, if she's a holy lady, when she goes to church, she's not aiming to meet a man they're, in the church. They're, they're in the club, too. They're in the club. <laughs> Them holy ladies in the club. Trust me, they're in the club, too. <laughs> the holy ladies are in the club. They're in the club, too. Some of them in the club, too. Yeah, but, I mean, so, so okay, so we're saying get yourself healed. Don't spread your toxic energy. But, Bishop, what next? What happens next? So, so I, I want to I address a couple things he said. Yeah. First of all, I agree with him. You can get with somebody that can handle um, helping you to heal. They have to have the capacity to do that. Though. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody's not will. Everybody's not. First of all, everybody's not willing to do that, mm -hmm. and everybody is not able to do that. Right. So make sure that whoever you get with, that they're willing to carry your baggage and unpack it. Mm. You know, um, and I think that's more what I'm talking about, baggage and not healing. 
you got to do the work on yourself too. But the fact that you is as you will it. Now, I, of course, I thoroughly disagree with him on the dating apps. Thank you, Bishop. Thank let me, you. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. I disagree with it, not not just because just to disagree with him, but I believe whether you're in person, at church, on a dating app, in the DM, in the messaging, you can get a no good person no matter what. They can be right in front of your face. I think if you have the fortitude, the discipline, and the tenacity to read it out, meaning you sit across the table with somebody long enough and they look good to you, then you become, you get lustful. You get in lust. Mm. Okay? At least on a dating app or long distance, in my new book, I talk about long distance relationship. COVID helped a lot of people because you couldn't go around them if you was really, and I'm I'm still COVID phobia because it's still out here. You right. have to see them and talking to them rather than being in front of them, it slows down the confusion of adding sex into the equation. True. Now, I agree with him on this. Some of them day naps have become some old apps where you just <laughs> gonna do some have some sex. All right. If that's what you're using it for. I was just people. I, was just I believe that whatever, whatever you use, you know, if you're on there to really meet somebody, you weed that out. But you can't say meet somebody at church. The devil goes to church. Amen. And, and just because a man go to church or a woman go to church doesn't mean that they know better. Hopefully they are. <laughs> okay? But I think that whatever way you meet somebody, you still got a better and time, time is the reveal of all things. The problem, and I'm finding out my bro, it ain't just the women. You got a lot of men out here that's desperate to get married, and I don't understand that. I don't, I don't either. I don't either. I did a, hey, bro, I did a video earlier. It's out from this morning. I did a video. I said, y'all be careful when y'all rushing into these marriages with these men. Some of them just looking for somewhere to live. <laughs> Hey, it's true. Listen, Bishop, they take your 50% of their stuff. If the last wife took your stuff, right? She's hitting you, she's hitting you at your job. You need you need a, a, a supplement income to, to keep a roof over your head. So yeah, hey. and and listen, all, all, all these independent leveled up got their own money women. You could you keep saying all that stuff. Listen, I'm coming to live in your house. I'm coming to live in your house, Susie. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to be a, a bit picky. We don't want no homeless. Sorry, sorry, not sorry. Can, can I can, can I say this one thing though? Um, I'm finding though that there is, and I use it on my show. I talk about the modern women mentality. There's a modern woman mentality that I think stands in the way of a lot of women being able to engage with men. I talked to a woman last night, just last night. And she liked me for about the full hour she was talking to me. And Bishop, Alicia, I drove, I drove, I dropped her off. She, she, she was at my job. I dropped her off. In that 10-minute conversation, I realized that radical feminist mindset could not deal with it for a second. She realized that I wasn't dealing with that for a second. And she... We are radical persons. We're going to meet up with men. We're, you know, we represent. We handle the household. We handle the bills. And it's not the time to happen. Who's not threatened by that? We don't want it. It's not threatened. We don't want it. We just don't want it. It's not a threat. We don't want it. <laughs> I, I think it's right. You don't want what, bro? I don't want any radical feminist woman anywhere around me, sir. I don't want it. I don't want. I don't want a man hating woman around me. A feminist is fine. Feminism. Y'all hate men. Radical feminists hate men. What does that mean? Whose boss is she? She's not mine. She's not my boss. She's not going to be my boss. <laughs> They know how to change hats, though. But they don't. That's the problem. They don't. 
and and yeah, but you see what she just said you see what she just said she said mm, she didn't she didn't agree to it <laughs> so what is the expectation when you come home it's not that i don't agree it's just that women we automatically wear several hats right when you <laughs> come home when you come home when you come home you submit you do, boss, outside the door. You just swore, Bishop. You said submit to my sister. You just told my sister submit. You just cussed at her. Go ahead. It's, it's, it's only thing submit means is to come up under. What's wrong with that? She just talked about church. I'm not, she just talked about church. I know she believes in that, right? Listen. I see, I see absolutely nothing wrong with coming up under a man as long as he's worth it. So I want the king for a Well, that, that, well, but you don't talk about that, whether he's worth it or not. That's up to you to pick the one that's worth it. The problem okay. is, the problem is y'all don't pick what's worth it. And then you want to run with it. What ain't worth it. I think a man, I think a man should be in the rightful place. You don't follow a man that's raggedy. Hey, I, man. I, yeah, but when I talk, I'm not talking about a raggedy man. I, I'm talking about a whole man. Y'all automatically go to raggedy and killing the man. But they decide... You they, can't want a man, you can't want a man and want to kill him, too. They decide he's raggedy in the relationship, though. That's the problem. If you decide a man is raggedy before you get to him, but you can't be in a relationship with a man, and then all of a sudden you say, you know what? This man is raggedy. I deserve better. No, 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 sis. You picked him. You now have to work with what you picked. It's like you buy a car, you buy it, you buy a luxury car, you get this luxury car, you're leasing it, you're paying the payments, and you're like, I hate you this car. What? I want to return you it. Know what, bro? I, I'm gonna keep it real. Because my queens out there, luckily, guys pretend to be, you know, they pretend to have it together. They pretend to be wanting to your face, and then when they catch you in the relationship, their raggedy behind shows up. The representative is gone, right? They said all the nice things. Okay, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I thought you invited us on the show to tell the ladies how to get a good man. Not talking about the rain. <laughs> exactly. Right? But but my point is this. I'm just saying. How do, how do you fish up? How do you how do I you just say it? Like yeah, the, the problem is the women are in a hurry like the last man, the last man just left the building. There are eight almost wow. eight billion people in the world. They don't do the due diligence. They immediately meet a man and they say yes That's to him true. In, in, in two or three months. That's true. You can't That's a man. Very true. Right. You can't, you can't, and then you complain about him later when he is, nobody forced you to be with this guy. And, 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 and can we say sparkling love? No, no, no. Listen to sparkly, sparkle love 758 says, no one is obligated to stay with someone who is pretending to be one thing and you find out there is something else. Sis, you obligated yourself. You got with that man. And these women don't understand that when they stand up in that altar and they say for better or for worse, they don't mean it. They say until I don't feel like it no more. I'm gonna get. Hey, hey, hey! No, y'all don't like that because you want it to come now. You want it to come now. You have to sit through the jump. Okay, I know. And, and the problem is they don't they don't sit through the jump. You know, they just immediately pick up. They go through the same cycle of not waiting. I and the reason why I blame the women is because whatever you allow a man to do, that's what gonna do and no, i don't speak to the raggedy men i don't minister to them 
if I tell the queen what to look for, then then they won't be able to get their self together. I'm true. I, re I refuse to call men junk who women picked. If you picked him, you are in a relationship. This is the problem. Y'all are diving out of these relationships as quick as these brothers be diving into your DMs. Do you know the word that's called covenant? Do you know the words that, that you say better or for worse? So women are... Well, I thought this show was about getting a man. What do you want with him? You can get a sneaky link easy. You can get a sneaky link real easy. Absolutely, but they're purpose. They're purposeful. I think pers my my position is this, Bishop, and I think you'll agree. I think you'll be forced to agree. It says, "He that finds a wife finds a good thing." She's not the wife when you find her. She's a wife material when you find her. But you're not in covenant. So the mindset with these women, these modern women, is that they're looking for husbands. They're not looking for sneaky links. They're not looking for side pieces. They're looking for husbands. And once they make that decision to say, I want to be in covenant with this man, they are jumping out. They're jumping ship because they're not 100 percent satisfied. And that's the problem with most of them that are sitting here saying, give me my next man. You've just run through three or four husbands. What happened to them? You got to tell a bishop my position is you tell that man right away and that way you 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 stream out the dudes who are not interested you tell that man right away i'm looking for a husband right away you tell him tell him right away be like oh lord i'm looking for a sneaky link i'm i will be gone if i'm not looking for a, a wife i'll be gone that's not true that's not true go ahead that sounded like what that sounded like is that women are interviewing these men i will not sit for an interview i will not be interviewed okay Bishop, let me hit you with something. If I meet a woman, right, and I like her a lot, right, right, right from the get go, I I don't necessarily want her to be going on a date next day with you. I don't want her to tell me, well, uh, I'm seeing Bishop Davis on on Monday. No, you ain't. 
Cancel that date, girl. I'm in here now. I'm in. I'm in. There's a new sheriff in town now. Okay. Absolutely. Yes, yes. I think I think I know right away. No, personally, no. I know right away. I'm like, oh, I, oh, God, you give me this one. You give me this one, Lord. I I don't need no more. <laughs> if you give, that's if you're that's if you're. <laughs> Stop the bad dude. You know another thing. This is another thing I said on the, our show. My show, the, the real spiel. I said this. Stop give. Stop asking men disqualifying questions the second you meet them. I hate that. And, and a guy, men our age, right? Okay, break it out. Explain, explain slowly. Stop asking that. Disqualifying questions. questions. So you just meet me. First thing you're going to ask me, how old are you? Then you're going to ask me, what's your sign? Then you're going to ask me, how many kids do you have? Girl, I've known you 30 seconds. You've asked me three disqualifying. Are you trying to be, you trying to be, you trying to run a daycare service? Right? You, <laughs> my sign. What does my sign have to do with this? Six seven chocolate you're looking at. That's nothing. To do. And my age. Us? We're producing kids till we're 70. My all my all <laughs> That's right. Once you see once you see gray beard, you know we are expertise in blowing your back out. Praise the Lord. That's all you need to ask. Okay. Can you produce kids is the question. No, because you know what? When no, they're disqualifying us. They're saying, absolutely, absolutely. I want them to get to know me. I want them to get to know me. I don't want to. I don't want a nice thirty-five-year-old woman walk up to me and she hear my age, be like, "Oh, I don't usually date men." I was like, "Girl, you've never met nothing like this in your life." But. We don't heal. We don't heal. We put tattoos on it and keep rolling. We don't heal. We don't do that. We scar. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, you know, we focused on the woman in terms of their healing. And Big Brother Dell just, just raised a good point. He said, men don't heal. We don't heal. We just, we just keep it pushing. We just move on. Right? Yep. How do we avoid, you know, Is that my question or bishops? No, it's still a bishop. First of all, he's absolutely right. A lot of men, because I'm not absolutely on anything, uh, a lot of men, there's a book that's out, it's called, and he was on my radio show years ago, Men Don't Heal, They Hope. They never stop. Mm. They just go from, hey, hey, bro, you're right. Sometimes they just go get a tattoo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But the broken men, the broken men want nurses, right? Absolutely. 
We do. We want a woman to understand our brokenness, to be compassionate and to help us through that that process where we got an ex in our background. We got we've got trauma in our background and we want somebody who says, I understand you, King, you know, somebody to take the th the, the thorn out of the lion's paw. That's that's the kind of women I think Alpha and Zeta men are looking for women who are ultra feminine enough that our masculinity doesn't intimidate them. But their femininity controls us. Because there's a shortage of us. There's more of you. So you might come across a good man who's a little bit broken, who's a fixer-upper. And if you apply some TLC, you might find a good man. But you going out here and you try to search for a perfect, brand new, spanking, shiny, clean, smelling like new car man. There's, there's not enough of us to go around. And some of y'all better go find a Bentley and say, listen, I'm going to work on it. He, he, he's my brother. He's he's my brother. I love him. I was going to wear his T-shirt. I was going to wear his T-shirt today. No, he was my brother. I mean, I, 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 like, I agree with a lot of stuff that he said. Uh, I didn't agree with the way he said it, but I yeah. didn't agree with everything you just said. Uh, because if, I, if, if, a, if a woman comes to the table healed as a nurse, you should come to the table as a doctor. But Bishop, that's not always the equity. We don't always find that equity. Hey, yeah, but so you're wrong. so quick to call women trash and bulls and all that stuff. I never said that. I never called no 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 woman a hoe or a trash. I don't mean you. Oh. That's not true. I think, I, think that's, I think that's putting too much pressure on a woman. I think that's putting too much pressure on a woman. And I think the man should do the work. He wants to be a leader. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to help y'all, bro. Go ahead. How are you gonna tell how you gonna tell the woman to heal you and you're supposed to be the head? Okay. Ooh, that 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 that's a that's a that's a that's a very good point. That's a very good point. I, I'm gonna use a Bible example. Right. Okay. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use a. Uh, I'm using an example. I'm gonna use an analogy. Okay. Bring it. Um, a, a real life analogy. Many times, men walk into relationships with women who already have children. They have children from another marriage, another relationship, right? And they walk into that situation, and they decide to be part of that new family and take care of kids that don't belong to him. Now, there's a reciprocity where that man might have walked in in a situation where he's not financially equipped up all the way. He, he's he got some his own drama, but he's coming into a situation where he's accepting what all the baggage that this woman is bringing to the table, and he not, might not be whole himself. All he's looking for is a person to say, I see you, I, I understand you, and if you want to use an example, it's like Christ on the cross. He's on the cross and somebody's reaching out to him and trying to give him something to drink. Because it doesn't matter who you are, at some point in your life, you're going to need somebody to heal you, to fix you, to feed you, to nurture you. And a man should not be expected to walk around like he's bulletproof and that he's supposed to show up and must, I don't need, I can do it all, baby. Jump on my shoulders. Uh-uh. Reciprocity. Take care of me too. Mother me. I don't need a therapist. I need a good woman. And Jesus. Hey, somebody, hey, 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 listen. One of my followers that know 
Tell her, tell her she needs in the minds of men from me. That's what tell her she needs that book. Tell her that. <laughs> Bishop, I got an example, Bishop. You've walked into a relationship and your back was hurting. And you said, baby, could you give me a massage? Could you, or could you just rub down my back for a minute? I've been out working all day long trying to bring money home to you. No. What is it? You don't. You don't. You figure it out in the relationship. You don't. You, because we don't ask the questionnaire. We're not. We're not giving you guys like you women want to give us this incredible questionnaire. We don't. We figure out. Does she get me? Most women, most intuitive, smart women who are trying to learn a man, they'll figure out that man faster than we'll figure you out. They'll, and we'll say, man, this girl really gets me. She puts me at ease. She's my peace. That's emotional healing in my book. That's a woman that's giving you an environment of a place of peace. That's a woman that's giving you an environment of a place of peace. Where you can do what my brother, my brother wrote about. You lay your head on her lap. That's trust. Right. That's not healing. Okay, define that's define healing. healing. Let Bishop Bishop define healing then, because we're going back and forth. I still talk about her. I still have triggers. You do stuff that remind me of I just talk about her and talk about her. Mm. And when you do stuff, you remind me of her. Stuff from her. I, I get angry. I get angry when I think about it. I don't have any, I don't have any, I'm insecure now. I'm broken man, man. That's what I'm talking about. You're talking about somebody to, to pamper you and, and love on you and, 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 they, you trust them. That's a difference. I'm gonna use your example. Of course, a man wants a safe place to lay his head. Let me ram the conversation back in because this is a, this is I mean really good nuggets here. But you know, it's Bishop, you know, you're about to do some dumb stuff dating. It's available now. All my London family, you know, the bishop has written this book with a workbook, the do's and don'ts of dating. You know, it's flying off the shelves, make sure you pick it up. Give me some of the key, give me two key things that's, that are in the book that you think are really valuable to my London queens. What do we need to know? I'm going to teach you in the book what to say uh, and not say on the first date. How to listen, how to listen rather than talk a lot. I'm going to teach you if you want to do long distance dating, uh, how to navigate long distance dating. And then I'm also going to tell you after 90 days to reassess because after 90 days, like my brother said, a man knows what he wants. If a man is not talking about you, and I'm sure he's going to agree with this, if a man is not talking about you in his future, then you ain't got no future with you. Yep. Should be obsessed with Hold you. Down. Should be obsessed with you. But can, can I can I give you can I give you some points from in the minds of men, ladies? Can I give you a few pointers out of that? Uh, I talk about the man team, the single fool, man types, and this is the one we just came off, the responsibility burden. And I think in every relationship, there's a responsibility burden on both sides. I should be able to have the interpersonal um, behavior, nurturing of a man to make that woman feel safe so that even if she got a baby daddy, even if she has an ex-husband, that man's effect on her life pales in comparison to what I bring to the table. That's my responsibility. And I think that's important. And I think that's why both people walk into relationships broken. To keep you, to keep you happy, or to keep you know, to keep you satisfied as the man, the head of the household. What do you expect in return? 
I expect a woman to be like a remote control for a television. She, sp- I'm a, I'm a, it's an analogy. It's an analogy. It's an analogy. Right. I can take your remote control for your television. I can bring it to my house. It won't work. She has to be able to know what buttons to push for me. She has to be custom for me. So what I'm expecting, I'm expecting a woman to learn me enough to know me so well that she can run me like a remote control. That's what I'm expecting as a man. Let me, let me, let me talk about the remote control. The remote yes, control, the remote, remote control, my brother, mm-hmm. is, probably, is probably the most lost piece of things in your house. <laughs> it's true. Preach, Bishop. It's, it's, the thing, it's, the, it's the thing that I never can find. Mm-hmm. Shando. It's always lost. It's always that in the wrong so place. It's always in Very the wrong revealing. place. It's always in the wrong place. I mm-hmm. never can find it. It's under the bed. Come on. It's mm-hmm. Preach place. to me. And, and, hey, bro, let me tell you something else. Let me tell you something else. Remote controls nowadays ain't no button. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is voice activate. Hey. Come on. <laughs> hey, come on. 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 <laughs> they know how to turn you off too. They know how to turn you off, but they can't turn you on. <laughs> That's right. I need an offer. Hey, Bishop, you need an offering on that. Call, just let the organ play. Let the organ. If Tim was here, I'd tell Tim, play the organ, Tim. The benediction. she's married at all. <laughs> hey, listen, I want to say this one thing. Last thing. I, there's this pastor. He married a couple. And the couple ran, they ran into some problems, right? Married for 14 years, got five kids. The pastor who, he, who married the couple went and told the woman, break up, break up with your, with, with your husband. Go break up with that husband. He's no good. And then he turns around and marries the woman's mama. And I'm like, yo, bro, like that's oh, that's too much. Like you involve you. Oh wow. Teresa raised a really good point. And um, in a conversation we were having previously about how to get someone, you know, to, to help vet the man or vet the person that you're seeing or you're interested in. Because I had class of one who told me to stay in a relationship with a man who was physically abusive to me. And I struggled in that process because I was getting my ass kicked, and I was thinking of just because the boss said so. So, in terms of Bishop, you know, how, how, who do we go to? Because some some things are pick the results. We don't know how to pick properly. We may be picking right and have some doubt. We are picking wrong. How do we get? Who do we go to to help us? You know, to vet vet the man. This guy is okay. This guy is not. I'm telling you. I'm currently coaching a, a couple that hasn't even uh, been together 
not there to take sides. I'm there to listen to both of them and then give my opinion and make them figure out, hey, figure out whether or not they meant to be. If you walk away from somebody doing therapy and coaching, that's a good thing in many cases because you didn't waste time to go to marry. So find you somebody that you trust that's mm. neutral. That's neutral. That's neutral. I don't believe that a man and a woman should go to either one of their pastors. Mm. Tell me more. No, no, well, because I believe that you need a neutral person. Find another man. It, ask him to recommend somebody. Uh, if you both go to the church, then that's fine. He's going to be on both of y'all side, and he's going to be fair to know both of you. But a lot of times, it's it's bias. It's bias. Right. It, it, it's bias. Find you somebody you trust. If you're a believer, find somebody that can understand that you're both Christians. Uh, but find somebody that, that, that you can trust. Uh, and they don't necessarily have to be married. It could be have been married. You know, I'm divorced. I was married 20 years. Um, and so, find, yeah, find somebody that you can, and I don't look at my marriage as failure. Right. No, no, let's talk about that really quickly because everybody on this call is divorced. And we get a lot of flack, a lot of comments about, oh, well, yeah. you ain't married. But just, you tell them, just, tell them, just tell them you're not for them. That's, you, uh, you, 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 but you have been married. That's right. And I was married 20 years. He was married forever long. We have been married. We've done where they where they're going, and we can help you not to get divorced by telling you what we did wrong. I say I say I'm an expert in dysfunctional relationships. <laughs> I'm a dysfunctional relationship expert. I know how I know what it looks like. I know what it sounds like. So if you want to know what a dysfunctional relationship looks like, ask me, buddy, because I've been there, done that, got the T-shirt, and got the roadmap to it. So. Yeah. I, I, and, you know, a lot of times, too, um, clergy doesn't always know how to counsel. I mean, not every clergyman's a good counselor. So they're supposed to know scripture and they're supposed to know the Bible. But if you can also find a good and if you're a Christian, if you, you, a good Christian couple that has a marriage that reflects the kind of marriage you want, especially with you modern women. Because sometimes, you know, first lady, you look at first lady, you're like, I don't want to be like first lady. I don't want to be like first. But find a couple that has a marriage that reflects what you're looking for in a couple and see if they'll sit with you. Actually hang out with them, become friends with them, copy their habits. And um, that support system might help you in the infancy of your relationship as well. I like that. I like that. I agree with that. You know, having the right support system. But, you know, as the bishop said, it's important to get somebody who's neutral because, you know, your best friend, you know, the people in your life love you will actually, a lot of the times, fight with you because you have, you know, a doubt and they're not able to put themselves in a very objective position to be able to assess something, you know, or to tell you what you need to get as opposed to what you want to get. Right. Yes. Well, I, I think I think everybody has has want to hear. Everybody has check boxes of of what they want to hear. A good a good counselor a good counselor is going to balance between correcting you and and supporting you um, because you're not you're gonna you're not going to be able to convert somebody's complete opinion mindset in one direction. And every relationship or marriage um, is custom built. They might be comfortable with that particular mindset, that particular approach. You know, my husband does all the cooking. He's the cook in the house. He does all the cooking. You might think you might sit back and say, why does he do all the cooking? But that's the culture of their marriage. So it's key not to impute your belief or ideology on it, but to support it and to help with the, the toxic portions. If you're if you're in that, that counseling. mode. But this is about helping a woman get a man. We're trying to get a man here. You're talking about people who have a man. Bishop, you know, are we recommended to tell me 
That's not what he said. But anyway, let, let's. You, can I answer the list question? <laughs> he didn't say that. Sure, answer the question, but that is exactly what Kevin That is not what he said. Anyway, so I'll tell you what he said if you want, if you have time, but that's not what he said. And first of all, women are not men engineers. Nobody gave you a diploma in how to build a man. Don't build no list and expect me to be on your list. I'm a man. I show up built. Okay? When I show up, assess me. Don't assess your list. Your list is not me. I'm a man. You can't build a list and, and a man pop out of your pop off your list. I'm a man. So when the man shows up that you like, that you resonate with, now assess me. Don't, don't build no stupid list because I'm not a list. God made me, not you. So women need to stop that. Find men, meet men, not on dating apps, like I said. Find a man and say, you know what? I like this man. No. Exactly. no. Exactly. I'm not saying that. Take whatever, exactly what take whatever shows up. Take about your list. Don't care about what you want. Y'all going to be single, 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 single with that list. I hope you can marry the list. I hope you can sleep with the list. You're telling them to be aimless and just get whatever they want. I'm saying. Sleeping with whatever they, whatever they just, whatever. Assess a man that you like. Stop building a list. Do you, do you live your life like that? Absolutely. You just take, you take whatever comes. No, I no. assess what comes. I assess what comes. You said take. No, you don't. Assess what no, comes. You don't assess. You don't assess nothing. If I get a job, if I if I, if somebody sends me a job and I look at the job they've I'm a, I'm gonna say, oh no, I don't like this. They're not paying me enough. I don't like the hours. I assess what comes. Women are walking around with a list talking about, um, uh, does he have? No, you're going to be alone with your list. Trust me. Find a man that you like and assess the man. And you're going to be stuck with a man that you have to assess and say, what the hell have I done? I should have had a list to go. If I have a list, hey, if I got a list, then I know I don't want you. Hey, what about the whole concept, Bishop, of things like opposites attract? What about women who meet a man who are like, you know what? This is normally not my type. Hey, bro, I believe opposites do attract. Mm -hmm. That don't mean nothing about my list. But, but if opposites attract, he won't be on the list. That's not true. Explain. I'm, I'm talking about character. You're talking about little things. Okay, that's good. <laughs> How about you can keep a, a man can keep a job? What is it? How about a man that's gonna respect me? How about a man? How about a man that is a, that that is not toxic? And Do they need to put that on a list? That's not thing you need to put on a list. I need a man. I, I'm gonna put. I need a man that respects me. Any man that respect me out here? Any man? You can't put that on a list. That's something you gotta assess how he treats you. Yeah, as we say in London. 
I didn't hear what Bishop said. I didn't hear what Bishop said. Come on, Bishop. We have two minutes. No, I agree. When you do a list, you're cognizant, you're cognizant of what you want and what you don't want. Why keep going? Why keep going through school of dating and dating and you never learn your lesson? The list has to know what you learn and what you don't want. Have you ever dated a woman? Tell your lesson. Tell your lesson. You ever? You ever dated a woman outside of your culture and she she introduced you to a type of food that you've never eaten and you say to yourself, oh, wow, wow, this is good. I would I would never I would never have tried this if I didn't ex assess and experience it. Some men are an experience. I'll, I'll accept. I'll accept. Let me wind up, bro. Thank you to the bishop. Get his book and his website is gregdavisshow.com at bishop, bishop Greg Davis. The do's and don'ts of dating. There is a workbook that goes with the book. Ladies and gentlemen, invest in yourself. You know, this has been the Dali Show. And I'm so grateful to you, gentlemen, for coming and sharing with, with us today. For my kings and queens in London, with love from Oak the Pond to you, both. I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you so much for a great conversation. And, and much respect to you, Bishop Davis. I love what you're doing, brother. I'm going to follow you. You're my main man. After Kevin gone, all we got is you. Oh, I forgot my YouTube people were here. God bless you, YouTube. We out.